Uh, we're in Romans chapter 9 through 11, that critical passage that uh, states unequivocally that uh, God is not through with the Jews. Uh, and we come to a very important pivotal passage actually in, in Romans uh, 11, 11, and 12, and I want to read that. <clears throat> Paul is asking the question once again that he asked in verse 1. In the verse 1, he says, 11 1, he says, I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. Meganoito, double negative. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. So he's identifying himself as one whom God has not rejected. He has accepted the Messiah. He's a part of the the remnant, he has acknowledged Jesus as Savior and Lord. <clears throat> he raises the question once again in uh, <clears throat> verse 11. Again I ask, the apostle says, did they, the Jews, did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? Now the Palestinians and the Palestinian sympathizers would say, yes, they have fallen beyond recovery. And as a result of that, because of the Palestinians' longevity in the land, the Palestinians now own the land. And it completely uh, preempts and uh, trumps the promises of God, the covenant promises of God given to Abraham with regard to the land to the descendants of Abraham. <clears throat> Did they stumble, the apostle asked, so as to fall beyond recovery? No, not at all. Again, the double negative. Rather, because of their transgression, their disobedience, their turning away from God, because of their trans transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles. You and I are saved. Gentiles are saved because of the turning away from the Jews, their, their transgression. For one purpose, and you, we need to acknowledge this pur purpose because it is critical, to make Israel envious. Now let me ask you this. You think Israel is envious of our religious system? That hasn't won them. No, I would suggest to you that there is a critical understanding that Israel has yet to make, as the Gentiles have yet to make, with regard to the name of the God of Israel. Listen to what God says to Moses in Exodus chapter 3, 315. God said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the people of God, the Lord, now this is written in capital letters. Wherever you see Lord, L-O-R-D, written in capital letters, it refers to the sacred name of God, which is Yahweh. So I'll read this uh, saying that. God said to Moses, say to the Israelites, Yahweh, Yahweh, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name. Yahweh is my name. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. Now, he's not remembered from generation to generation by the Jews because the rabbi have said, don't use that name. You might use it uh, uh, despairingly or you, you, you might uh, uh, misuse it. You might use it in vain and therefore uh, break the commandment, the third commandment, you should not use the name of the Lord your God in vain. So they don't say it. And most Gentiles aren't aware of it. But the scripture tells us, read it in Malachi chapter 1, verse 11. My name shall be great from the rising of the sun to the setting. My name shall be great among the Gentiles. I believe one of the major tasks of, of Gentile believers is to exalt the name of Yahweh. And that will create envy on the part of the Jews. That's exactly what God says. His name is Yahweh forever and ever, from generation to generation. That is his name. And that has yet to be emphasized the way God wants it emphasized. <clears throat> so he says, rather because their transgression, of their transgression, the Jewish transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel env envious. That, create, that will create envy when the name of Yahweh, the name of the God of Israel, is exalted by the Gentiles. That will, I promise you, create envy. Verse 12, but if their transgression, the Jews' transgression, means riches for the world, and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, because of their disobedience, 
we have experienced the richness and the riches of God's salvation in Jesus. That's what that means. How much greater riches will their fullness bring? There is yet a day when a spiritual revival and renewal will take place among a remnant of the Jewish people. Zechariah speaks of it. It's a great word in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. It says, I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. Spirit of grace from God, a spirit of supplication to God. I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me, Jesus, the Messiah. They'll look on me. Uh, the one they have pierced, they will mourn for him as one mourns for a, an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieves for an only child. They'll look on me whom they have pierced. That day's coming. And after that, and even prior to that, the exalted name of Yahweh will go forth throughout the universe. I will pour out upon the the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, a spirit of grace and supplication, and they will look to me.